Hey guys, welcome. Um, today we're going to talk about the female reproductive system. So last time we kind of talked about the male reproductive system and we're going to transition over into um, the female reproductive system. So in a nutshell, um, it has a couple main jobs. This is where um, eggs are produced and this is where fertilization of the sperm and egg occur, right? So it's a big deal and obviously where the embryo and baby are going to later develop. Okay, so um, over here in this kind of area, we obviously have the kind of the frontal or anterior view of the female torso. And um, the structures that we're going to be talking about today really are going to be situated right here. We're going to be talking about the uterus, the vagina, the fallopian tubes, and the ovaries, right? So here in this pelvic uh, cavity, this is where you'll have the uterus, right? The uterus is a big muscular um, sac that is where the embryo and baby will later develop. Um, that's connected to the vagina, which comes down here. And then the fallopian tubes kind of extend out on either side. And these fallopian tubes are then going to connect to um, each ovary, right? Two ovaries, one on each side. Okay. This is a little gray color. One right there and one right there, okay? So what we'll do is um, we're going to kind of take these structures and we're going to zoom in. So I've drawn this in a much bigger form right over here so we can really see what's going on. So we've really zoomed in on this pelvic region of the female to see what's inside of these reproductive structures from this um, frontal view. Okay. So again, let me kind of outline this stuff to make it um, look a little bit more um, obvious. This structure that connects the uterus and the womb to the outside world, that is the vagina, which is located right here. And so the vagina is located here. This obviously receives the penis. And um, this is where sperm are deposited during ejaculation, okay? Now, the vagina um, consists of smooth muscle, which undergoes these rhythmic contractions, which we'll talk about. And... Um, that vagina is connected to the second part of the female reproductive system, which is called the uterus. So this uterus is this uh, muscular sac here. It's about the size, of, I don't know, like a, like a pear, I guess you would say. Um, women that have conceived, uh, you know, children, especially large children, their uteruses um, are going to be larger. Okay, so the uterus is located here. And the uterus, um, you'll notice that this thick red wall of the uterus, that consists of... Um, three different layers. The largest layer is this myometrium, and that's just a thick bundles of smooth muscle. Their main job is during childbirth. When it's time for that baby to come out, these thick walls of smooth muscle start to contract, right? Oxytocin is the hormone that, that stimulates this, and that is what pushes the baby out, right? Now, the inner lining of this uh, uterus, that is composed of endometrium, and that is the epithelium that um, the, the embryo after fertilization is going to implant and grow. It's going to bury itself in this um, kind of black line that represents the endometrium of the uterus. Okay? okay, so here's the uterus. Now, the uterus on either side is going to have these two tubes that emerge laterally. Um, these are the fallopian tubes. And let me kind of outline these guys. So here are the fallopian tubes, and these guys connect the uterus, or the inner um, kind of cavity of the uterus, to each ovary. So each ovary is this oval-shaped structure located right about here. Um, there's going to be two ovaries. Ovaries going to be a right ovary, and there's going to be a left ovary. Now, to put all this kind of into perspective, all right, nutshell, the ovaries, these guys produce eggs, all right? Each ovary is going to release one egg um, each month during the female reproductive uh, menstrual cycle. So one month, this ovary is going to release an egg, then that ovary is going to release an egg. So the egg is released from each ovary, um, one, one, one per month, and then inside this fallopian tube, that's where fertilization um, must occur, right? This kind of end of the fallopian tube right here, that's called the ampulla of the fallopian tube. And um, one interesting thing about the ampulla is that 
it, there's not a direct connection between the ampulla and the ovary. So this ovary releases it in an egg and the ampulla has to catch it. And it's almost like this vacuum cleaner that's kind of like searching around the wall of the ovary looking for where that egg gets released. If it doesn't catch it, that egg is going to get released into the abdominal cavity. That's not a good thing because if fertilization of that egg occurs there, the embryo is going to attach outside the uterus. That part of the body is not meant to kind of sustain or nourish that baby. And so it's going to be fatal, potentially fatal to both mom and um, baby. Anytime egg fertilization occurs outside of the fallopian tube, that's where fertilization should occur. It's called an ectopic pregnancy. And um, these guys um, are not viable pregnancies. They often result in miscarriages, and if not, um, surgery or medical attention is needed to kind of um, abort this, these pregnancies. All right. So, eggs released here, fertilization has to occur here. The sperm is deposited right here, right, right um, between the uterus and the, uh, the vagina. This little area right here that separates the uterus from the vagina, that's called the cervix also called the neck of the womb, right? So the cervix is right here, which means that these sperm have to travel all the way from the, basically the cervix all the way over here to the um, ampulla of the fallopian tube, pretty much. That's a long distance for these tiny little cells. I mentioned in the other lecture, um, sperm don't swim that fast. They swim about seven inches in an hour, okay? That means that it would take them about 45 minutes to swim from the cervix all the way over to the fallopian tube. Uh, that's equivalent to the distance of a, of a trained swimmer swimming like five miles, okay? But here's the crazy thing, is that fertilization has been known to occur only three minutes after ejaculation occurs. So that means that these sperm are getting from here to here in about three minutes or three, three minutes or so, right? But it should take them about 45 because they swim so slow. Now, how the heck are they going from here to here so fast? Well, it's because the female reproductive system is really helping them get from point A to point B. The vagina and the uterus are undergoing these peristaltic contractions, which propel the sperm to the side of the egg. And what's even crazier is that they've, these contractions propel the sperm towards the right ovary, or to the correct um, ovary. You know, like they alternate each month. So if this is the ovary that releases the egg, the sperm that are deposited here are kind of um, directed towards the correct fallopian tube, okay? Just to give you a sense of how powerful and how, you know, um, you know, how strong the body's ability to fertilize an egg is, is that sometimes, you know, a fallopian tube may become blocked due to like a cyst, ovarian cyst, or like a, a cyst of the fallopian tube, which would prevent any type of sperm from traveling from here to um, here. So let's imagine this ovary releases an egg and the egg's right here, but it's completely blocked. I don't want to mess up the drawing too much, but imagine that this fallopian tube is just completely blocked. Okay, that's what this kind of dark region that I just drew here. So the sperm can't go from here to here because that's where the egg is. But when about one in every 10,000 pregnancies, this will occur where this um, egg is fertilized right here in the fallopian tube. The sperm can't go through this cyst. So any ideas on how they got there? Uh, here's, it's crazy. This is how they did it. These sperm will positive here, they swim all the way over here, out of the fallopian tube, because remember there's no direct connection, and they swim all the way through the abdominal cavity, all through the intestines, all through around the bladder, they swim up this side and they fertilize the egg right here. Now unfortunately that's not a viable pregnancy because in order for the embryo to develop properly, it has to travel into the uterus where it implants into the endometrium. So, but it just gives you a sense of how powerful kind of the reproductive system can be. All right. Now, in other species of, of animals, like in dogs, for say a lot of other mam mammals, there is a direct connection between the fallopian tube and the ovary. That means that every egg that's released gets captured by the fallopian tube. Now, one big difference between a mammal like a dog and a mammal like a human is that dogs have obviously a lot more offspring, or they have litters, right? They're gonna produce a lot more offspring per um, pregnancy. So it's thought that this was an evolutionary adaptation to prevent large litters of humans because we obviously can't handle that. Um, 
Now, sometimes there will be two eggs that are released and captured by the fallopian tube. Those two eggs, if they are fertilized, then um, that's when you get paternal twins, okay? Identical twins occur when after fertilization of one sperm and one egg occur, those, um, the daughter embryo splits into two and those um, genetic develop into two identical twins. Okay. All right, good deal. So what I wanted to kind of talk about now is we're going to kind of zoom in and we're going to look at a lateral view of where all of these organs kind of exist in the, in the female body. Okay, so here is obviously a lateral illustration of a female, kind of the lower torso and pelvic region of the female, kind of looks like this, right, got the belly button here, this is going to be the lateral view of the right side, okay. and the reason I'm drawing this view is to kind of show you where all of these organs exist from this kind of lateral. First thing, so kind of the female external genitalia starts right about here and extends posteriorly, okay? Um, the first kind of part of this from this view will have the, right, the clitoris right there that is an analog to the male penis. It's a, it's a collection of erectile tissue which becomes engorged um, during, during sex. Right, and then if you pass posteriorly, that's where we'll have the entrance or the, the urethra, right? The urethra that connects the bladder. So the first kind of um, orifice, if you extend posteriorly, this is gonna be the urethra. The urethra is gonna connect to the bladder, which is located right here, so let me color that in. Now, it's important to note that this bladder sits right behind the pubic bone, right? And so the pubic bone is going to be located right here, right? So that's kind of the sagittal section of the pubic bone. The pubic bone um, um, produces this kind of bulge of tissue um, just anterior to it. It's called the mons pubis, right? Then, so we've got um, the clitoris as we go backwards that connects to the urethra and then posterior to the urethra, that's where we'll have um, the opening to the vagina. The vagina is located right here and the vagina from this view, one reason I kind of focused on this view is that the vagina kind of tilts backwards, right? So it kind of tilts backwards as it enters the body. Then, as the vagina connects to the cervix, you're going to have a really distinct bend because the, the cervix, which separates the vagina from the uterus, the uterus is now going to tilt anteriorly like that. So you get this really distinct kind of tilt of the uterus as um, it, it, it travels forward, right? So let me kind of finish this out. So here's the uterus. That tilts forward and the uterus really sits on top of or superior to the bladder. I'll label all this stuff here in a second. So in this view we can't really see the right fallopian tube but we can definitely see the left and that left fallopian tube is going to kind of extend out like this, wrap around and then he's going to kind of come back and he'll connect to that left ovary which in this situation is sitting behind the uterus. Okay. Kind of connect it together like that. All right. Now, as we go backwards, that's where the kind of the, the rectum is going to be situated just posterior to the vagina. So the rectum is going to be situated here, right? And that is going to connect to the anus, which is right there. All right, now one other thing that I wanted to mention is that let's talk about the cervix because the cervix does some pretty amazing things. What I'm going to do is we're going to kind of redraw this cervix up here. So imagine we're just kind of zooming in on the cervix, which is, I'm going to do a dotted line down here. All right, so we're kind of zooming in on this cervix. The cervix is a pretty interesting organ.
What you'll find is that we've zoomed in on this little neck of the woman, the cervix. This is where the uterus is separated from the vagina. What you'll notice is during this kind of um, neck of the womb, you're going to have these little dead-ended little pockets of tissue that are located all along the side of the cervix. These are called cervical crypts. And to me, they're super interesting because they have a pretty important role in um, fertilization. So these cervical crypts can house and store sperm for like three to even seven days, on average about three days. And they can keep them happy and healthy so that they could potentially fertilize um, the egg. So this is a place where sperm can, sperm can be stored if, um, if sex occurs before ovulation. So in a nutshell, we'll focus on the female menstrual cycle next time, but the summary of it is that it's about 28 days long on average, right? Around halfway through the cycle, around day 14, that's where ovulation occurs. This is when the egg is released from the ovary, okay? If fertilization occurs soon after, that's when the embryo um, is going to um, implant itself into the endometrium and develop as a baby. Okay? And if not, if fertilization doesn't occur, the whole cycle starts over after about um, 28 days. Okay? Now, there's a series of really important, um, really important mucuses that are uh, secreted by the cervix. Okay? So what will happen is that if sperm are deposited into the female reproductive system before ovulation occurs, two sets of mucus are going to be secreted by, these, by the cervix. One set of mucus is gonna block any abnormal sperm from entering into the uterus. The second set of mucus is gonna guide sperm, which I'll draw as these little orange, I don't know, little orange kind of specks, into these cervical crypts, okay? The larger crypts are obviously gonna contain more sperm, right? And then a third set of mucus is gonna plug them in there. So we could kind of draw this as, I don't know, maybe like a slightly darker color. So we'll draw these little plugs of mucus that kind of plug up these sperm inside the crypts and they keep them there right then when ovulation occurs you're going to get a fourth mucus which dissolves these plugs allows the sperm to emerge swim up into the uterus potentially fertilize the egg in the fallopian tube then the fifth mucus which occurs right after right after ovulation that's going to plug up the cervix and it's just going to prevent any other sperm from entering into the female womb right so a really intricate kind of organization of sperm and as you can imagine right so we'll talk about this next time but the timing of the female menstrual cycle is really variable between females um, and also within a female so the average is like 28 days with ovulation occurring on day 14 but that can range anywhere from like 17 to 35 days and then you know ovulation doesn't necessarily occur on day 14. you add that to the fact that sperm can be stored up to like three to four to five days after um deposited into the womb then you've left with a situation where um basically fertilization of the egg has been shown to be able to occur on every single day of the menstrual cycle days 1 through 28 so um there's a slightly higher probability of fertilization occurring after ovulation around the second half of the cycle but it can occur during any time it's due to all these variables that occur okay last thing i wanted to do is i wanted to kind of zoom in on the female ovary so here let's kind of zoom in on this female ovary down here Female ovary, this is obviously where the eggs are produced, right? It's going to be oval in shape, about the size of a grape, okay? Now, um, the female ovary is going to have two different parts. It's going to have a cortex and it's going to have a medulla. The, um, the cortex is obviously on the outside. The medulla primarily consists of blood vessels that nourish the, the ovary. So on the, in the inner medulla, you're going to have these blood vessels that kind of come in like this, and these guys are going to nourish these cells of the of the ovary right and then obviously a gonadal vein which comes in is going to carry this blood that's already been kind of used up okay now along the cortex of the medulla that's where we're going to find a collection of really important cells called follicles these follicles are a collection of cells that are wrapped around each young egg or oocyte and it's gonna these guys are going to nourish these eggs now, in the ovary, there's going to be follicles that are in various stages of development, right? So these larger follicles are going to be ones that are, are developing. They're getting ready for ovulation. And these smaller follicles are the ones that are not developing, 
right? It's really not their turn. During each month, there's about five or six different follicles that are developing, even though only one of these eggs is really going to be released, okay? So we're going to have all these different follicles that are kind of developing, right? And each and within each one of these follicles, which color should I draw that with? Um, you're going to have kind of a, this light blue. Oh, you can't even see that. Oh, we'll just do um, black. You're going to have an egg that's located in each one of these follicles, all right? Now, when it's time for that follicle to release its um, egg, right, it's going to kind of look like this, right? And it's going to release that egg out of the ovary, kind of like that. So that egg is going to get released. Kind of draw an orange arrow to represent that release. And then the ampulla of the floating tube is hopefully going to capture it, which will allow fertilization to occur. Now, after this guy gets released, that over that follicle is going to turn into another structure called the corpus luteum, or the yellow body. It's going to be both of these structures, the follicle and the, the corpus luteum, um, which is left over after ovulation, are really important in the production of ovarian hormones like progesterone and estrogens. Okay, and we'll talk about that next time with the, the, um, the menstrual cycle. But this guy is going to turn into the yellow body, which kind of looks like this, I don't know, in a nutshell. And so you'll, the yellow body is literally just leftover pieces of the follicle after ovulation occurs, which has a completely different um, role in female reproduction. I'll draw some other immature follicles, which just aren't developing yet. Okay. Very good. All right, I think we pretty much covered it. Thanks.